This is part two of my two-part small video series on Desmos graphing calculator tips. Um, on the first video, I covered topics right here. So graphing equations, inequalities, substitution, systems, um, and zeros. But um, in this video, I'm just going to cover regression. So let's go ahead and I'm going to remind you how to open the graphing calculator. Again, for um, students in Loudoun County Public Schools, you're going to log into LCPS Go. And you're going to find the math folder and you're going to click this button. If you're not in Loudoun County Public Schools or you enter this a different way, you're just going to type in Desmos uh, Testing Graphing Calculator. Um, testing because I'm doing this specifically for standardized tests. Um, which you don't have all the functions available to you on those tests. I also distinctly pick Virginia because I think some other states have some uh, different functionality on there. Um, if you just want the regular Desmos graphing calculator, you can just uh, Google that and get that calculator, but I'm just going to use this one. So I'm going to bring it back up. We are going to talk about regression. So here's the problem with regression. This is what I usually see on the Algebra 1 um, SOL, and this video is specifically for Algebra 1 stuff. Um, there are questions that usually now, they don't give it to you in tables anymore. They give you a list of ordered pairs or a set of ordered pairs. And they want you to pick the best equation. And you got to consider if it's linear or quadratic. On the algebra SOL, they only do these two types of regression. So here's how you would do this one. First thing you would do is in Desmos, we would put in all these points. So the first one's, uh, let's make a table first. So you're going to click plus sign, add a table. And you're going to put all the x's in this column and all the y's in this column. So I think all the x's are negative 4 through 1. So negative 4, enter, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1. And then for the y's, negative 4.8, negative 8.2. Negative 9.1, negative 8, whoops, 8.1, negative 4.7, 0 0.3. Hopefully I typed those all incorrectly. Okay, let's blow this up. Let me uh, zoom in on our graph here. So that's what it's going to look like. There's our points. So if I were you right now, I would determine which this is. Is this linear or is this quadratic? It should be very obvious when you see the points. Okay, how do you know which one it is? A linear equation, the root word of linear, is a line. These do not all fall on the same line, but they do fall on what looks like to be a U-shape or a parabola, which is what is formed by the equation of a quadratic. So this is definitely going to be quadratic regression. You need to pick quadratic. So knowing that, if you look at our choices, it's either A or B, because those are the quadratics, because they have degree 2. Degree 2 um, means that the highest exponent on a single variable equation, the highest exponent is 2. Okay, And that means there's up to two um, possible solutions or x-intercepts. There could be 1, there could be 0, but it's up to 2. Anyway, so let's pretend we didn't know that. Let's pretend we didn't know this is quadratic, and we want to do linear regression. So to do linear regression... It's a little tricky. So you can't just use y and x, and you can't just use equals. So here's how you do it. You have to type y sub 1, and if you just type 1, it puts it as a subscript. And instead of equals, we have to use, um, this is a regression. For regression in Desmos, they use the uh, tilde. Uh, if you don't know what a tilde is, it looks kind of like uh, this. Okay, or it's the similar symbol in geometry. I'm not sure why they use that for regression. Maybe I'm missing something. But uh, to get to that, you're going to hit Shift, hold down Shift, and click the um, top left key that's right below the Escape key. So top left key right below the Escape key is a little tilde thing. Um, on your um, keyboard, it should look like this on the top, and then it has like a little mark here. So that's what the key looks like, and the Escape key is up here. Okay, so that's how you know which one to click. That'll give you um, what you need for regression, and then you're going to type m, because remember, linear is y equals mx plus b, slope-intercept form. So x, but we got to make it x sub 1, and then plus b. 
So, in case you forgot, y equals mx plus b, this is slope-intercept form, m represents the slope, um, x and y are your ordered pair, or your variables, and then b is a constant that represents your um, um, y-intercept, so where you cross the y-axis, and then it gives you your equation here. So here's your equation. Your equation is just going to be this exact thing, but, and I'll just type it here just because, you're going to put in y equals, and you don't need to actually type this. I'm just typing it so you know what the equation would look like. m, which is 1.057. They round to the uh, tenths place, so I'll round to the tenths place, 1.1x, and then um, plus, and that says negative 4.18, so it's really minus about 4.2. You see how it overlaps this red line now? It's not quite the same because I rounded. So... This is what the equation would be for linear. As you can clearly see, these points aren't on there. Okay, um, The way that you can tell how strong a linear regression is is by looking at the um, coefficient of determination and the correlation coefficient. So um, I think the coefficient of determination is this one. Maybe I'm getting those backwards. Anyway. Um, you want this number to be closer to 1 or negative 1. If it's close to 1, it has a um, positive slope. If it's close to negative 1, it has a negative slope. But either way, you want it to be close to 1, or you want this number to be close to 1. The square gets rid of the positive and negative. This just tells you how um, strong it is. 0.3 and 0.5 are not that close. You would want this to be close to 1 or this to be close to 1. They're not that close. Um, by close to 1, I mean usually one that we want strong enough is usually like 0.75 or better. Um, 0.5 to like 0.75 um, is like moderate, but not really. The strongest is like um, 9, 9 or better. So this one isn't that strong, okay? But if we do a quadratic regression, you would do y sub 1 tilde, and you would type in the standard form of a quadratic equation, which is ax sub 1 whoops, sub 1, squared, hit right, plus b, and remember you have to write x sub 1, plus c. So that's the standard form for a quadratic equation. Now, as soon as I type that in, do you see how it made this um, parabola right here that's almost perfect? So it looks really good. If I want to get rid of this linear equation, I can just click this and it'll go away. But that looks really good. And the other way you can tell is, the R squared value, I believe that's the um, uh, correlation coefficient or coefficient of determination. I always forget which one's R and which one's R squared. Anyway, it's 0.99. We want that to be close to 1. That's really close to 1. That's really good. So um, we're going to use this stuff to come up with our equation. So we're putting this in for A, this in for B, this in for C. And just instead of Y1 and X1, it's just going to be Y and X. And instead of tilde, it's going to be equal sign. So the equation is going to be y equals 1.1, and I'm getting that from here and rounding it to the tenths, x squared. So to square, you hit, um, you can either go to this and hit the squared key like that, or let me get rid of that, or you can um, hit shift 6 and then put 2 in there and hit right, plus 4.2, that's from here, x Plus, and then C looks to be negative 4 point, let's say negative 4.9. So I can put minus 4.9. You could put plus negative, that'd be the same. See how those overlap? Um, they're not quite exactly the same because I rounded, but that's what the equation would be, and I'm getting that from here. Um, so that's going to be answer choice B. Notice they specifically gave you a set of ordered pairs so that um, these values look basically exactly the same as these ones, except the sign is opposite. They did that on purpose to try and confuse you. So you just have to know this is a quadratic by looking at the um, either the R squared value or the R value, and um, just looking at the graph in general and seeing what shape it makes. Okay. Um, if you want to try and figure out, um, like estimate some kind of answer, you can make a table in here like I just showed you before. So here's a table. Um, we clearly want... Uh, I guess we can just use those. So let's say I have 1, 2, I don't know. Let's put in just easy ones. Negative 1, 0, 1. Let's 
do that. Okay, and then in here, I think I showed you how to do this before. We just want to put that equation in. So I would just put in 1.1x um, .1 squared plus 4.2x minus 4.9. And I'm just estimating here. Enter. And then, let's see what I did wrong here. Oh, sorry, got to put x sub 3 here, so I need to put 3 there. Now it'll work. Okay. So if you look, make that bigger. And now graph those and notice that those points, um, if that's this point, I think, maybe. let me get rid of this graph. Yeah, these points, these ones in black. So the ones in green are from that table above. But you can use this to estimate a bunch of values here. Um, you might be able to make a slider. So let's say x sub 1 equals like 3. Oh, no, that changes things up there. That was bad. Yeah, don't do that one. Anyway. This is basically how you do regression. Like I said, this is just a quick video. Um, I didn't go over this multiple times. So this definitely isn't one of my best, but hopefully you got the point. This is how you do regression here. There, I also have a video of how to do regression in the graphing calculator. You can find one of those online. This is a, um, probably just as easy. You got to remember just as many things, but this is just how you would do it on um, the SOL test. Okay. Hope these videos were helpful. If you're in one of my classes, there is a Google form that you need to complete in Google Classroom.